Covering education tonight, it's a decision that will impact the funding for nearly every kindergarten through 12th grade classroom in the state. Lawmakers are discussing how to distribute money in the next state budget for education. RTB6 State House reporter Katie Hines joins us now live to explain. Katie. Todd, you might be able to hear the background noise behind us. This hearing now going on and into a fourth hour on the proposed changes to the school funding formula. And Superintendent Dr. Lewis Farabee from IPS, one of dozens of people who has stood up in front of lawmakers to plead their case for more funding. Under the current proposed changes to that formula, IPS is set to lose more than $30 million over the next two years. Changes to the school funding formula direct more money to the districts that are gaining students. That includes many of the suburban districts, such as Avon and Hamilton Southeastern. But the shift hits some rural and urban districts hard. Superintendent Dr. Lewis Farabee says IPS could lose between $254 and $392 per student in the next two years. We believe these reductions are too volatile. The pace of change is too fast. For any corporation to either gain or lose this significant amount of funding over a short period of time. Farabee says the reduction could lead to the elimination of transportation for field trips and after school activities. IPS provides free lunch to all students based on the district's overall poverty rate. It's affecting the proposed funding because under the federal program, parents are no longer required to fill out applications. The lower free lunch rate does not and should not imply that there is less poverty in IPS schools. The executive director of the Small and Rural Schools Association says 70% of the state's small and rural schools will lose funding under the current formula. You look at, at the funding that schools have, our schools are trying to do with about $2,009. The chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee says lawmakers will consider phasing in changes to the funding formula to help ease the transition. What we can do is look for a sense of of equity about how you deal with different types of corporations, different types of students. Now, overall, the proposed budget for education increases funding for K-12 education by $469 million. Republican leaders say that it closes the gap between the quickly growing suburban districts and those urban and rural districts that are losing enrollment. The House has already approved the changes. It's now in the Senate for discussion, and lawmakers have until the end of next month. Katie Hines, RTV6.